Hi, there are a lot of intramuscular injections going on right now. Now I don't inject people, but I take people apart and I teach human anatomy and embryology to people that need to know human anatomy and embryology. So what we'll do is, um, we'll look at the anatomy in this region and we'll do a visual run through of what's here nerves and there's a bursa and bony points and that sort of thing so that if you are performing intramuscular injections into the deltoid region you've got an idea of what this needle is trying to avoid all right i'm going to try to be brief but i'm not very good at being brief so we're talking about um, well, at the moment, injections of vaccines into the muscle. So the muscle here is the deltoid muscle. Um, and the deltoid muscle, which we can also see here, this is a big one, is, you know, it, as, most, as, in, as with most muscles in people, it varies in size and strength and that sort of thing with, with age and muscularity and what have you. But it's a muscle that... Um, there's a big part of abduction of the upper limb, but it also has fibres that lets you do this and this, so flexion and extension. And it's innervated by the axillary nerve. So it's a biggish muscle, and in addition to those movements, one of its other jobs is it, it, it holds the upper limb, it holds the arm into the shoulder. So when you're like having, carrying a heavy load, right? If you didn't have your deltoid muscle, boing, uh, your humerus would get pulled away from your scapula. So this is what we're looking at here. This is, these are the very deep bony bits. Okay, they're very deep, so they're quite a long way away, but bony bits are great for palpation, aren't they? And you can palpate this bony, the highest point of the shoulder here. So this bone is the scapula, here is the clavicle, and this is the acromion. This is the acromion of the scapula. Uh, you know, like the Acropolis is the highest point. So that's a good landmark. And the deltoid muscle is running from the spine of the scapula and the clavicle. So a major parts of the shoulder girdle and inserting into the humerus. So those are the very deep bony points. So relative to the acromion, you can see where the deltoid muscle is. It's inferior to it. And you can see that a big bulk of its belly is, you know, it's just a little way inferior to it. And be mindful that um, with age and atrophy of muscles, um, this muscle might drop a little bit lower. It might be a little bit thinner in some people and it'll be thicker in, it'll be thicker in very muscular people and it'll be covered in fat in people that have um, a larger deposition of fat underneath their skin. All right. But what about nerves then? So if we take, if we take the deltoid muscle off, look, there's the acromion, here's the humerus, and we can see a nerve here straight away, and this is the axillary nerve. So the axillary nerve, this is posterior, look, there's the hand, posterior, anterior. So the axillary nerve has gone posteriorly, like around the axilla, to get to this point here, where it's gonna innervate the deltoid muscle and it's going to innervate uh, the skin over the deltoid muscle. Now, if you put a needle into a nerve, there will be instant pain, right? So you know if you've hit that. So the axillary nerve is one. Now, what other nerves have we got around here? Well, we've got the radial nerve, because the radial nerve is going to go to the posterior compartment and innervate triceps and the posterior compartment of the forearm and what have you. So if, if that is where the deltoid muscle is, and there's the axillary nerve. Now, can we see the radial nerve? Well, we would have to go quite a bit deeper. Here's the radial nerve here. So it's more lateral, it's more posterior, it's deeper. So the, the radial nerve has also come around posteriorly around the axilla. So it's largely out of the way, but it is a big nerve. All right. Now, the other nerve that you might be thinking of is the musculocutaneous nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve goes to the anterior compartment, to biceps and brachialis and what have you. That, see where we are? All right, so if the deltoid muscle is here, so this is lateral, then 
the musculocutaneous nerve is coming from the brachial plexus. It's staying, it's staying medial to the shoulder and it's gonna run into the anterior compartment here. We would have to take off biceps to see the musculocutaneous nerve. So the musculocutaneous nerve is well out of the way and not an issue. The nerves we might be interested in if we are putting a needle into this region would be the axillary nerve um, and the radial nerve. But the axillary nerve is the one at greatest risk. So you'd have to go, you know, fairly deep to get to the axillary nerve uh, and you can see that it's very close to the bone in this case. Okay, now there is another structure here, another really, really important structure. It's one of those structures we always take for granted. Um, it's a core part of our body that lets us do things that we do every day and we only miss it when it's gone and it's the synovial joint here of the glenohumeral joint. This is the scapula articulating with the humerus. And this is a synovial joint, so the articulating surfaces are covered with articular cartilage. It's surrounded by a synovial capsule and there's a little bit of fluid in there. And the shoulder girdle is an amazing thing and it gives us this wide range of movement, which needs to be supported by a lot of muscles holding all this together. That's the trade-off. We've got a wide range of movement, but the joint itself is quite weak, so the muscles hold it all together. So look, if, if we put the deltoid muscle back on again. If I take this, look where we are, there's the acromion, right? There's the acromion there. Here's the muscle mass. If I take the deltoid muscle off, look where the joint capsule is. So it's very close to the acromion, but it's all of this here. So this is, well, we've got, what we've got here is we've got the rotator cuff muscles kind of blending with and covering over the synovial capsule. If we strip that away a little bit more and we look at this model, we can see a couple of things. We can see this emphasized green bulbar structure here, and this is really important. And the shoulder has a number of tricks to its game. Um, from the scapula to the humerus, we've got two muscles up here. We've got supraspinatus and infraspinatus. All right, so there's the spine of the scapula supraspinatus passes through there and supraspinatus helps start off abduction of the upper limb and infraspinatus is inferior to the spine of the scapula and it's going to rotate the humerus that way it's going to give lateral rotation or external rotation of the humerus now if we look at this model sorry this is a left shoulder and we've been looking at right shoulders um, but there is the supraspinatus muscle here. The green thing is, it's a bursa. It's the subacromial bursa. It might be called the subdeltoid bursa because deltoid muscle is also here, right? And this is very much like the synovial joint. It's, 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 it's a very thin membrane, like the synovial capsule, and it has a little bit of fluid inside there. And what it does, it's, um, it, 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 it lies in between things that run over one another to help make that process easier, you know, to, re to spread the load, to reduce the friction, to stop things rubbing together, all of that sort of thing. So the subacromial bursa, again, is one of those things we take for granted, but um, if this gets inflamed, it can swell. Look. This is the gap that we're passing through. There's a limited amount of room for supraspinatus to run between the acromion and the scapula. And that's covered in this bursa. So if anything gets inflamed in that space, it's gonna limit the amount of space there for everything else, um, which will give pain and ten if the subacromial bursa gets inflamed, we tend to get very tender, uh, localized tenderness, but it will limit the movement of the upper limb. And if after a vaccination, the deltoid muscle is fairly normally sore and tender the next day, if a needle causes inflammation of the subacromial bursa, this is something that tends to get worse over time. It lasts a lot longer. Um, and it can be resolved, you just need to get that inflammation down. So this is the subacromial bursa. It's covering the tendons of supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle. And it's, 
it's, it's overlying this, all this stuff here in the joint capsule and kind of filling the spaces between the bones. So that is something that's here, but we can't see it on this particular model. All right, so the subacromial bursa then is close to the acromion. If you stay away from the acromion, no problems with the subacromial bursa. Also, if the tip of the needle stays within the muscle, it's not going to go deep enough to get to the bone or the subacromial bursa, right? Also, it's going to avoid these major nerves. There we go. How's that? So, if you are giving a, an intramuscular injection into the deltoid muscle, you already know how to do that. You know which needle to use in length and that sort of thing. But if we're working in this region, hopefully now you've got a better visual idea of what's around here that it's at, at risk. We have the acromion, the bony process that you can palpate. We have the deltoid muscle that can vary a little bit in thickness and tone and that sort of thing. It can be covered by a variable amount of fat. And then in here we have the axillary nerve, which we do need to worry about, so we don't want to get too close to the bone. The axillary nerve is coming in from posteriorly. We have the radial nerve, that's a little bit further away. It's much more posteriorly and inferiorly and really in the posterior arm. And then we have the joint capsule and that subacromial bursa up here, and it's close to the acromion, subacromial bursa or subdeltoid bursa. And that's it. So if you are one of those people, one of those many, many people that's giving a lot of uh, intramuscular injections right now, thank you. This is the only way we're gonna get out of this. Science saves us again. All right, see you next week. <laughs>